wait for 45 more minutes, and then we go inside a building, right? And this this reminds me of sort of like the kickoff call that they told us to have in OTA Level 2. Um, and if you're in Level 1, having a kickoff call or seeing your welcome kit is, is sort, of, sort of like this experience, right? So now I'm inside, and if you've seen that Avatar movie, they have like a base on this foreign planet, and, and now we're in a room that mimics like the base that you're in. This is the online trainer show, trainer show, trainer show. This is the online trainer show. We shouldn't have a podcast. Yes, it's my birthday. <laughs> oh, oh, and now it's too bad that Jonathan is here to miss it. But here, like between you and I, guys, like keep a secret. I've been like low key, like tipsy since nine thirty this morning. Nice, <laughs> nice. Good for I you. Got, I got my bubbly here. So. Nice. Mm-hmm. So, so it's that kind get, of day. Uh, we're gonna get tipsy Carol today. Tipsy I Carol, excited. yes, yes. I'm here for it's it. my birthday. This is thirty nine, baby. Thirty nine years old. Of choice. Uh, this is prosecco right now. It's both because we had mimosas in the morning, which is what started this tipsy train that I'm on right now. And then it was like a margarita while lounging on the pool. It's a great life that I'm living today. So and so, yeah, I'm I'm okay with this. <laughs> I'm okay. To <laughs> that are I love it. I love it. It's very very Gladys Knight and the Pips. Uh, you're you're leaving on the tipsy train to Barry. Uh, yeah. I'm leaving leaving on the tipsy train to Barry. Leaving on the tipsy train to Barry. Woo woo. <laughs> like I love that. Uh, it's, it's it's very R and B. It's very sixties R and B, Carol. Uh, I'm Absolutely. I'm here for it. I'm here for it. And you, <laughs> and you had a you had another incredibly thoughtful and riveting uh, riveting post today on on the internet. Uh, yeah, I learned I learned so much from your bikini pics, Keto. Thank uh, you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I it's... strive to educate. I mean, what can I say? I'm here for the people. <laughs> <laughs> and you do it so effortlessly. Uh, I've. I see these posts and I think, man, like this, this should be revered. This is, this is, this should be uh, its own sort of category of literature. Li- I'm sorry, literature. Uh, you know, <laughs> the captions to Keto's bikini posts. Um, yes. I think, you know, Jeopardy, if you're listening, uh, rest <laughs> in peace, Alex Trebek. But uh, if we get a whole category of uh, Keto's bikini pic captions, uh, I think there's some. I think there's some learning opportunities there for. <laughs> I have a game view. idea. Do, we do we need you? like bingo for for Caro's Instagram. Like if you see <laughs> bikini shot, it's like <laughs> emoji <laughs> bikini shot, food picture, <laughs> like right, a combination yeah. of there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, there's, there's some. There's something else happened. Yeah, I've been waiting for a social justice post. Bingo. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Did she say queen? Did she use the word queen? Yes. Right. right. Bingo. I, I've been waiting on this, man. Uh, you know, so uh, we. I'm happy to have you here on your birthday, Keto. Like, thank you. I, thank you. You know, I was. I was thinking it was going to be me and Amber, and I just annoy her for like 45 minutes. I mean, I still. I can. did that last week. Right. Yes. Right. <laughs> I bet you did. So, so how did how did how did that go? How how was because the the podcast hasn't come out yet uh, mm-hmm. that that you two recorded. So for those listening, you've probably heard the podcast with the the women, uh, as we as we affectionately call them here, um, and uh, and and so that went down. I was I was absent, uh, and you know when I don't show up now, Jonathan just doesn't show up. Uh, that's that's a thing now. Uh, he, <laughs> He thought I wasn't going to be here today, so that's why he decided to not show up. That's that's not true. I made For that shame. up. I made that up. Um, <laughs> He's but Keto, it's me. it. Right, right. So, but Keto, it's your birthday. You've already mm-hmm. said the number, which gives me permission to say it. Thirty nine. Yes. Uh, I know better I than to say happy. it other than that. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, you're 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 so much more of a twenty five ish thirty nine. It doesn't matter anyway. <laughs> you know, it's, it's 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 not like people pass you on the street and like. Hey, I just passed a thirty-nine-year-old lady. Uh, <laughs> like, you, you know what I mean? Like, it's it's not like that happens. But a, a lady came to my school. It was an older lady. Like, that's not what people say about you know. You got I don't high, think so. <laughs> high amounts of energy. You're in you're in your second your second set of twenties now. Um, yeah. So so how did I know I know the day started with mimosas. Um, yes. 
We are at okay. Tipsy Keto. Uh, yes. So I have actually like a great story. And this is honestly like a freaking lesson to anybody out there who has somebody that they care about now, in their now, life. Before you, before you get into this, is this the kind of wisdom that needs to be saved for the caption of a bikini pic? Like, I don't want you to waste anything here on us. We're, you know we're not what? worth it, certainly, uh, you know, when this could go under a bikini pic. But if you feel, <laughs> well, actually, you have a two-week window here because it won't come yes, out. Yes, I do. So you can use I this do. caption in the bikini pic. And for the folks yeah. that don't see the bikini pic that probably get posted today, um, wisdom for them in two weeks when this comes out. So It will. I, I'm sorry. Yes. Go, go ahead. I, I lost my head for a second. <laughs> So this morning I woke up to like a full breakfast of mm -hmm. machacado con huevo, which is a dish that we eat traditionally in my region of Mexico because Jeff actually contacted my mother and my sister oh, to ask nice. about something that was that is traditional, that is important, that is customary, that she might be missing. And he figured out because we don't have the exact ingredients. He mm -hmm. found an actual recipe. He figured it out so that he could make it work with the stuff available. And it was delicious. And the kids demolished it. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is so Holy great. Smoke. Yes, yes. Wow. So that's one of those things that is like, that's that's what makes you feel loved, right? It's not like, yes. oh, the big expensive showy. What is like, no, I actually thought of something that mattered to you. And I went and did that. That Oh, my gosh. What a man. What a man. What? What? <laughs> The, uh, he's he's like a lady. Stop it! Step back! Step back! Wow! Wow! Uh, <laughs> I, I think I think Salt and Pepper and In Vogue uh, sang it. <laughs> what a man! What a man! What a man! What a mighty good man! <laughs> yes, he is. Uh, I'm a, so glad a... that Jonathan is not here to read us the lyrics. Right, right, absolutely. <laughs> no, nobody needs that on their birthday. So if no. I can, if I can throw my two cents on in here, uh, damn it, Jeff, this kind of thing that pisses me off. You're setting the bar too high for the mortal men. You know, it's not good enough. It's not good enough to like uh, my my impression of him is that he's a tall person. Is that correct? Okay, yeah, so he's I'm, six four. Oh yeah, I'm already pissed off about that. Uh, he, <laughs> He all he also bears a resemblance to to Hugh Hugh Jackman Hugh Jackman so he's basically a mayor a wolver a, a mutant mayor he's a Wolverine of Barry. Um, on top of this, he makes something that I can't pronounce, uh, which which enrages me. Uh, and he seems to also be a kind, considerate individual. Um, he's True. basically ruining it for everybody else. Like you're, True. Mr. Mayor, if you're listening. You're ruining it for all the other lazy men out here who just don't <laughs> just don't have any inclination of being that considerate. Like I have no I have I have no ambition to be that considerate of a significant other. Uh, like, let's just put that out there. Very like, honest. I, Very I honest. Got, Thank you for your I honesty. got stuff to do, man. Like I got dishes to wash and you know clients to serve. Like I can't be caught up with caring about people on these levels. Um, <laughs> And here he is running a municipality. The man's running a, a city, for goodness sake. Mm -hmm. A city that's got a water tower. I've seen it in photos. That's a big deal. You've seen it. There, there's a very two. water tower. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you have two. Yeah, right? Yeah, see, that's impossible. It's incredible. And, and then on top of that, he makes a delicious Mexican dish. What, what is the, could you name the dish once more for us, Kato? What is it? So the, the short is machacado. The full machacado. thing is machacado con huevo. Con huevo. All right, mm -hmm. all right. Okay, so they, yeah, it, I'm pissed off about this. Uh, can, we, can we move? Can we move past this? Uh, we've we've all had enough of this. Uh, listeners out there, we're gonna move past this. So, you guys know I was away, right? You know. You, yes. Yeah, we you, felt you, your absence. Yeah, yeah you, in you, our you know, absolutely, absolutely. It's, it's like it's like an eclipse of the sun. Obviously, you know, I, I wasn't. Obviously. I wasn't here. Uh, Everything That's was why I'm just still drinking. Just still, still drinking. Just still drinking. Yes. Kettle's still <laughs> trying to recover from the from the loss that was felt <laughs> for the last time I wasn't here. So she got up and she rolled out of bed into a glass of mimosa um, <laughs> this morning, which is appropriate. You know, I've I've heard people. I've seen people do more because of my absence. Quite frankly, uh, so so I went I went to Florida. Uh, and, and I was doing like fun things, uh, in, in Florida. It was, it was awesome. Um, but I, I missed you guys. So, so Aww. I'm happy. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy to be back here, uh, because you know, Tuesdays and Thursdays, which when we record the podcast, Tuesdays and Thursdays are like super fun days for me. You know, I, I get to, I get to sort of 
<laughs> sound funny. But I get to check out for an hour. <laughs> Oh, Tuesdays and Thursdays. So, Forget all your responsibility. Yeah, yeah. So what you guys hear is the checked out version of what my brain does every Tuesday and Thursday. I'm like, okay, free time. Like, I don't have to be smart or uh, make sense or any of those things. Like, I'm not really solving problems. Uh, you know, I just, I just get to, I just get to interact with with awesome people on Tuesday and Thursday. So I'm happy to be back and and doing those things now. Now, Amber, you you pulled out the pool. Uh, you know, for the fourth, from what I from what I saw on the on the Instagram on yeah, yeah on on Al Gore's internet, uh, you know, and you don't like to get wet yourself. We we've already no. established that, so there was no pool participation uh, no. for you at all. Okay, all right, you just now, you although f- like, we did run in a lot of rain puddles, which I he forces me to run through those, so I right. suck it up for Nate, but that's really about it. But yeah, we pulled right. out a giant storage tub and just filled it with water and perfect Nate size. And, and and how is running through the, the puddles of water? Like, are you running barefoot or are you running no, with... I'm running in my tennis shoes. See, see now, here's here's a problem for me. Uh, and I want to get this out in the open right away. Like, I'd rather have my entire body submerged in water uh, than have my snoot shoes or socks <laughs> wet. Like, that's the worst freaking feeling in the world to me is have soggy shoes and or socks. Uh, I'm Now, is that... Would you rather have wet shoes or socks and not be in water, you know, with sh- shoeless? Like, is that is this a level up for you? Is like wet shoes and socks that's better for you that's than better. being in an actual body? That yeah. that's great. That's insane. Yeah, you're but talking like, crazy. I don't like that feeling, but it feels like that everywhere to me. Like, oh, gotcha. Normal. Right. So at least it's just confined to my feet. So yeah, now, okay. Ren, my least favorite experience is wet like wet shoes like when you're wearing flip-flops and right and then you you try to walk and your feet are sliding all over inside the flip-flop because it's it's like plastic and it's wet and it's like disgusting (laughs) wet wet foot items categorically across the board are the worst things to be the worst clothing items to be wet are you know your shoes because it just it seems like it just never dries like i've gotten a wet shirt before and Eventually, it feels like it dries, and it's actually quite refreshing if it's a hot day. You know, your shirt gets a little wet, but but shoes, I I can't do that. Uh, I feel I feel like my feet are melting, and that's really weird. Yeah. So we're gonna move past that. Um, as Keto takes another sip. Uh huh. Lots of sips happening today. <laughs> I almost, I almost said a cuss word earlier. That's how tipsy I am. Like my filter is. We need to. I need to be careful. I have a feeling we're gonna get a few new caro gifs out of today's episode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Tipsy, tipsy keto. Uh, that may be the best keto. That's right. Raise your glass. Salute keto. Um, do do what you gotta do. This is the, there's a woman on the podcast toasting herself. If you, for those of you that can't. That's right. Hear the glass you know passing through. Like, to happen. We should be toasting ourselves just right. <laughs> Like Ren says, on brand, Carol. On brand. Yeah. Always. She does not deviate from the brand. You know, and, and that sort of brings us to, to what we may discuss today. Uh, because I had some significant interaction with the Disney brand. Now, Kettle know what we're talking about because she didn't look at Slack channel at all. Uh, no but, idea. So, sort of what we're going to talk about today, Keto, is um, is my interaction at Disney and sort of what I learned about business uh, mm. from going to Walt, the luxurious Walt Disney World in Orlando, Florida, which is the yep. original Disney. That's the first Disney. It's Disney World. For those that aren't familiar, Disneyland is in California. It's trash. Uh, I'm just <laughs> kidding. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to all our West Coast listeners who just who just turned it off. Uh, I don't know this trash. I'm sure it's a, an amazing theme park in and of itself. But you know, I'm supposed to be enjoying myself uh, at Disney World. I'm thinking about you guys the whole time because uh, oh. you're because you're, you're such an important, you're such a significant piece of my existence. You know, I can't go anywhere without thinking. I wonder what Amber and and John and Ketter are doing right now. Uh, so. <laughs> That that's what I was doing at Disney, obviously, as I was having fun. Okay. I was like, man, you know, this I'd love to talk to Amber, John, and Kettero about this. Uh, so I just brought I kept that same energy 
and I just brought it back here to the podcast today. Uh, so we're just we're just gonna see we're gonna see if anything positive turns out from this shell of a topic that we came up with at the last <laughs> at the last second. Now now, Keto, are you are you an amusement park person? Is does that interest you in any way? I mean, any amusement park? Oh yeah. So, oh, so you're big big time. That's your thing. Love it. I I have okay. a lot of fun. I'm not a huge fan of all kinds of rides, like spinny right. rides and stuff that makes you sick. I do not like, but right, like the right. experience of being there, I totally go into kid mode and I'm mm-hmm. just as bad as my children. Cause I'm like, Oh my God, look at that. Oh my God. Okay. Okay. We get, can we go buy one of those? Like I'm totally that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm an instigator. I'm yeah. I'm one of those. <laughs> Yo. The only ride Keto likes is the mimosa train. Let's get that established here on the podcast today. She's she's all she's all aboard the tipsy train. I could see uh, her on it's a small world sitting in the oh, absolutely. In cup. Absolutely. Hey. absolutely. I'm I'm thinking about like the giant teacups and, and Keto sort of like <laughs> swimming in a teacup teacup full of mimosa uh, in her favorite bikini. Uh, of course, that would be always. so on brand, by the way. Um but but you know I noticed some things at at the Disney. I'm going to put a V in front of it because I'm mm. over 45, and that's what you do in old age. You put a v in. <laughs> Are you on the Facebook again? Are you using the pot? So I noticed some things at the Disney uh, that sort of translate to what we do here. And and Kettle's probably going to get some of this because she's a she's an amusement park lover. She's not big on the rides. Now, Amber, what what are your thoughts on amusement parks? I know I know you pretty much hate just about everything else. Except for tormenting your friends uh, with uh, with inappropriate board games, I do. Uh, but are you a are you a park person? Would you do an amusement park? Is it just we've done a lot of them growing up. I am okay. actually not a fan of Disney World itself, gotcha. um, Disney stuff, but like Orlando and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Because Orlando's got a few different things. They've got the Disney World down there, and they've got Harry the uh, Universal Harry Potter at Universal. Wars. Star Wars stuff's going on down there, and and that's sort of my first. Here's my first point about what I learned at, at Disney, and it is that they have um, they have a differentiation of parks for lots of different tastes. Now, it's all under the umbrella of one niche, obviously. Uh, that niche would probably be uh, amusement parks, and that niche would probably be, obviously, Disney. But inside of that, you've got Walt Disney World, which is basically you're talking about the Magic Kingdom right there. And Walt Disney World is your old school Disney stuff. Your Snow White, your Cinderella, the the Sleeping Beauty Castle or Snow White Castle. I can't remember which castle it is. Um, You know, you got your Mickey and your Pluto. Did you guys know that Pluto, do you know what kind of animal Pluto is? Anybody know that? I thought thought not Pluto. Yeah, Pluto's a dog. Goofy. You know what Goofy is? Goofy is also a dog? Goofy's a cow. Blew my mind. No. Mind blown. Goofy's a cow. You can Google it. Like. Yeah, I, no, I, <laughs> I feel like I've been lied to my entire life. You have, you have, because Goofy's not a. Yeah, you know, I, I always thought, why would they have two dogs? Goofy's right. actually a cow, uh, and I guess wow. Goofy's technically a bull unless he's non-gendered. You know, I don't know, uh, but mm-hmm. I've always taken Goofy to be a uh, to a male-gendered character. Uh, uh-huh. So apparently, Goofy's a cow. I digress. That's not what's important. Here. What's important is you know under the umbrella. They have offerings that are tailored to certain mentalities. Like if you're into the cartoon stuff, the uh, the old school Disney Magic Kingdom, that's where you get that stuff. That's that's the that's the Walt Disney World you see on TV. But they've also got they've also got a Disney Hollywood Studios, right? And this is where they have the Star Wars stuff and some of the Marvel stuff. I didn't go to that one. Um, it would they have re- reservations and they were they were all booked up for that part. So that's a whole nother park, the Hollywood stuff, right? So if you're into the Disney sort of uh, movie studio stuff, that's where you go to see that stuff. You, you know, um, like I said, Marvel and, and Star Wars, because they've acquired a bunch of stuff. Disney owns this podcast as of the last five minutes, as a matter of fact. Uh, we've, just, <laughs> we've just been acquired by Gen Z today. And then they've got the Animal Kingdom, right? And the Animal Kingdom is like the Lion King stuff. There's a safari at the Animal Kingdom. Um, the, the avatar based on the James Cameron movie avatar that's in animal kingdom. That's where I went. And, and then they've got Epcot and Epcot's trash. Nobody goes to Epcot for any reason. <laughs> you know, you, you pass by Epcot, uh, Epcot's not where you want to go. So 
So what I learned is that these different parks are very, very niche down in the entire presentation. Animal Kingdom, you get things, like I said, like the, there's a tree of life there uh, mm -hmm. that's in quote unquote Africa there. Uh, the the world of Avatar, Pandora is the name of that place, the fictional place in Avatar. Uh, they had Asia, and in Asia they had these uh, birds of prey that you could see in Asia. They had a like a bird show of some time. They had a they had a Mount Everest theme ride in in Asia. Um, you know, so they're very very nuanced in what they produce, but it's very very as as I say about Keto. Uh, it's very, very on brand. Uh, like <laughs> you don't get the other stuff in other places. Um, right. You know, so Disney in effect has really, really, they really perfected the art of niching down. And even in that context, a sub niche. So even though they have other niches and we talk about that a lot of times with, uh, with coaches as mentors, uh, Amber, you know, people say, you know, well, I want to work with women. And we'll say, well, maybe you should sub niche that, be more specific. In my case, working with moms, right? It's a it's a subculture of a niche. Disney's really good at that. But what I wanted to talk about most was their ability to sell. Because two things I noticed. One is their onboarding process, and the other thing is their selling, their closing process. Uh, now, Disney doesn't change their prices. Like, you don't, right. you don't get a... Don't get a lot of Disney discounts, right? No. Uh, there's not a lot of sale items there, uh, and that's based on their branding. But you guys, so onboarding, I went on a ride, and the ride was two and a half hour long wait. Two and a half mm. hours. I knew that up front. Wow. Crazy, right? Uh, that's 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 even longer than keto has been drinking today. Um, <laughs> so I went, I went, I went, and that's a long time, believe me. Um, her her cheeks are getting rosier by the second, uh, and her, and her eyes are getting squintier by the second. So <laughs> here's what Disney did, guys, and this is a great this is a great way to understand the onboarding process. So you got a two and a half hour wait, like, and and if you had, to, do you think that the two and a half hour wait was just a line that's outside? You know, no. Disney has stages of onboarding for every ride. So I'm waiting for this mm -hmm. Avatar ride. It's called Flight of Passage. And in Avatar, they have these big dragon-like things. And the, and the blue people, they get on top of the, the flying dragon thing and they tame them or whatever. And they mm -hmm. have that thing. It's called Flight of Passage, the most popular ride in the Animal Kingdom theme park. So it's two and a half hour wait, they say, or, or two hours. I don't know. So about 30 minutes of it was outside. Right. We're just waiting in the line. We're in the theme mm -hmm. park. There's a stretched out line. Super nice lady with the sign that says line starts here. Uh, she didn't have any of your may I speak signs, though, Keto. I was disappointed by that. But she did have very line sad. starts here. Yeah, very sad. <laughs> um, so you start at this line and you walk you walk up the line for about 30, 35 minutes and then it changes. Now, in the Avatar ride in particular, now the line wraps around these fake mountains that they made. So you got a new experience and you're, you're still waiting in line, but they've got something there to entertain you a little bit, to, to keep you busy. This reminds me of OTA level two keto. You know how they, when we close a client uh, to send them, uh, ask them for a three day food log, right? Yep. Like, right, so, so, we, so we keep them busy, right? Like we yep. give them something as they're waiting for us to present the program to them because we need a little time to work on it. So brilliant. So now I'm waiting in these lines that are wrapping around these mountains. And in these mountains, they've got these, they've got speakers in the fake grass that are mm -hmm. making like alien sounds. They've got these cool lights that are shaped like alien lights. They've got all this stuff, all this slightly new stuff just to keep you a little bit occupied. And now you feel like you've, so at each step, you feel like you've graduated in some way, right? I'm not waiting in the line outside now. We're on the ride. We're in the mountains, but I'm out on the ride. I'm waiting there for 45 more minutes. Wait for 45 more minutes, and then we go inside a building, right? And this this reminds me of sort of like the kickoff call that they told us to have in OTA Level 2. Um, and if you're in Level 1, having a kickoff call or seeing your welcome kit is, is sort, of, sort of like this experience, right? So now I'm inside, and if you've seen that Avatar movie, they have like a base on this foreign planet. And, and now we're in a room that mimics like the base that you're in. 
and they've got this science equipment. You're still waiting. They've got this science equipment. They've got like a life-size, one of those blue people, the Navi, and he's floating in water. So you can hook your brain up to that quote unquote avatar, right? They got they got um they got these uh these guns and they got the they got stuff on the projector and the lab coat lady, the doctor is telling you all about it, getting into so you're still not on the ride. You know, you you spent a, a good two hours at this point navigating through this system, but you're still not there yet. And then you go into one last room, and in that last room, they're giving you the instructions for the ride. Like, put your put your stuff away. There's a video, and a guy comes on the screen. Put your stuff in this compartment here. Here's what our team is trying to accomplish, right? Uh, on this, you know, we've we've in, we've uh, we've integrated into the Navi culture. We've got to survive this flight of passage. They'll trust us, and then we can like he's giving you all, and that's sort of like our welcome kit, right? Uh, they get that in the mail sort of before they start, if we send it to them or if we email, them. you see where I'm going with this kettle? Um, like Disney has perfected exactly what we do, what all good businesses do mm -hmm. the onboarding. You have laid out stages that just when the person's about to get annoyed, you give them a little something new, right? A little yeah. something extra to keep them sort of occupied. And then just when they're about to get annoyed by that, you give them something new to learn, learn from, um, now, Carol, had, did your onboarding process change a lot from the time that we went through OTA Level 1 after we did 2? Because we did OTA Level 2 together. Do you remember right. your onboarding changing a bit? I do remember that because um, I remember kind of like it finally clicking. Like it's true, like when you put people on a pause before the actual program begins, they're kind of like yes. in a limbo, but they're excited, but they already have energy because they already signed up and you're wasting that time by yes. not giving them something to do. And what happens in Disney rides as well as in our business is that when you start giving people things that are engaging, now yeah. they are really like they are really sold on your process now they're invested because they feel like they're actually taking steps and taking action so they are way less likely to back out and be like no you know what never mind i changed my mind i can't do it after all or whatever because now there's an investment there they've actually put time and energy in, in small amounts into the process 100 percent. and it the most shocking thing that i noticed is that none of the kids in line complained about the weight Cause, right. And we work with kids engaging. all the time. <laughs> yeah, pretty we much. With our children all the time. Uh, uh -huh. And at every step, there was something else that the, the children were fiddling with or touching or inspecting or asking about or in some cases pulling out of the ground. Uh, you know, but they were never like there was none of that. Are we here yet? Is it a ride started? Yeah. Like they they didn't know the difference between it being the ride and being the weight. Right. And, and sort of in our onboarding process, our clients, if it's done correctly, they don't know the difference between the enrollment and being enrolled, right? If you do yes. it right, they're yes. already in the program. So, but, but had the two and a half hour line been outside of one door for the ride, if we'd been outside in the sun for two and a half hours without those Forget subtle it. changes, Oh man, I'd have been pissed off. <laughs> I'll tell you right mm -hmm. now. Like I'd, I'd have been ticked off, man. That that, and that's what it's like. Like at at a lot of normal theme parks, it's like that. Um, Amber and I are both sort of relatively close to a theme park called Carowinds, um, and it's the Carolinas, North Carolina, South Carolina. It's actually on the border of both states, but it's a large theme park, similar to like a Bush Gardens, Great Adventure, or something like that. Six Flags, etc. Um, there, you just freaking wait in the line. And it's awful because there's no shade at Carowinds. Like it's it's awful. You're hot the whole time. So now on the on the sales side, you know, because I know we've got a limited amount of time. What Disney's really good at, and we talk talk about this all the time. We talk about the fact that people buy based on emotion, right? And they justify with logic. Yeah. Guess where you walk into as you exit the ride? Gift shop. For the ride, mm. the actual exit from the ride, I'm all hyped up because I just flew a Banshee and it was sensory aware. Like it's a it's a VR sort of thing that particular ride. So you hold mm -hmm. onto the handlebars and there's little there's little pads on the sort of fake motorcycle seat looking thing that you're on, 
and they they activate. So they push against your inner thigh as if this thing that you're riding is breathing in and out. Uh, and there's one point where there's water on the screen and they splash water on you. So it's a VR mm -hmm. experience. Like my heart's racing when I come off the thing. I walk out of the exit. They say the exit's this way. The exit's right into the shop for that particular ride. So you got right. the little dragons that you can purchase, little dragon wings you can put on. What do you think the kids do when they come through? <laughs> what do you think Kara does when she gets out of the ride? Like, I do a gift shop. I want the wings. Like, oh I'll my fight my, my children for that. <laughs> Kara, you are the target market for this level of yes. branding. Because right? I have the enthusiasm and I have the money for it. So, yes. <laughs> You're an enabled child. You're a financially enabled yes. child going through a gift shop after a ride. Uh, oh my gosh! They got your, they, the uh, the 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 workers are circulating a photo of you on their on their on their devices. Hey, here big comes commission. the sucker! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big, big commission if you sell to this lady. <laughs> the sucker's almost off the ride, guys. Look sharp, everybody! Button your button your shirt, tighten your pants up. Here she comes. Uh, so, so, but that's brilliant because they know that you're. They don't give you ten steps after that ride to get to the gift shop. They no. don't give you five steps after you it's go automatic. out of the exit. You're in the freaking gift shop automatically. Yeah. And everything makes sense when you're in that yeah. emotional state. And that's what we talk yeah. about so much when we talk about our sales calls, right? Mm -hmm. We want to generate again, you know, I don't know how it was for you, but OTA level one for me, um, I got really good at sort of doing things through internet, like, uh, like um, email and things like that. And then OTA level two, uh, and both methodologies work about the same. This is just slightly different. OTA level two, get on the phone call and they, they drill into us, you know, generating that emotional response. Like, ha have, have you seen that you've had increase in your ability to get people emotionally involved in what you're about to do, Keto, and then get them in, like, how's that work for you? I think the biggest difference that I've noticed for myself is that I started adopting, I guess, a more, uh, you know, aligned with the Disney strategy um, idea based on the fact that, for example, in Disney, when you talk about you're coming out of the ride and you're automatically on the gift shop, Disney doesn't look at somebody and say like, oh, I think they're strapped for money. We should right. probably give them the other exit right. because I don't think they can afford any. Look at all right. the kids they have. They're going to be in trouble if we, they don't, they're just like, this is the exit. Everybody goes through the exit. Whatever decision yes. you make is entirely up to you. And the same has to be true for our business. Like after this program is done, you present all of your clients the next option that you have. You don't go qualifying like, oh, she told me that her family was struggling. That's not a call for you to make. That That right. is a grown woman with autonomy and she will decide how she uses her funds and money. And maybe yes. that is with you. Why will you take that opportunity away? Absolutely. Man, that's such a good, I didn't even consider that. Man, Tiffany Carol's <laughs> on top of her game I, i'll drink yeah. to that hey! <laughs> oh i'm sure you will keto uh, i'm sure you will uh so uh you you, you drink to waking up this morning moment uh this morning so why not why not drink to making a great point um you know so so like you said you like you're going through that gift shop disney is going to respect your autonomy to make that choice about what you're going to do and I got to tell you, like, from what I witnessed in that gift shop, eight times out of 10, um, that emotion and the fact that you're able to generate it um, and the fact that you're able to present an offer once that emotion has been generated, it kind of turns into a no brainer uh, mm -hmm. for uh, for the visitors to Disney. Mm -hmm. You know, I thought it was amazing how well they are able to uh to, to set up the automated sort of chain of events that happen up to a ride or as you're enrolling and 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 um and onboarding mm -hmm. through the actual process right keeping you involved in the process keeping you locked in focused on what's going on in terms of the ride that you're on because there are no distractions you know w once you once you get onto the ride Disney is good about minimizing any and all distractions. Like they make sure that you can only pay attention to what's happening there. Quite a few of their rides happen indoors 
and away from the audience, right? Mm-hmm. Which, which is another which is another great sort of OTA level two technique of building that that private group, right? Uh, you're keeping that group of people isolated. That there are very few rides at Disney that are that are especially in the Animal Kingdom that are all sort of outdoors where you can interact with people that are around the ride and you they, you talk to them and they talk back to you. Of the rides that I took, none of them uh, were in particular outside the whole time. You're immersed mm-hmm. in it when you dive into it. Um, you know, but the branding, the organization, the attitude, the intent that they approach what they do with, and the fact that they are very, very clever about being on target with what they're doing at all times, non-judgmental about who can or cannot uh, afford it. Like Disney could very well go through the problem that we see a lot of uh, coaches having, Amber. Um, I don't know if my price is right. You know, I, what about the people who can like ultimately, like, would you say, Amber, that's sort of not our decision to make as coaches, like to, to, throw our prices up and down and down. Like, what are, what are your thoughts on that? Like, well, it's, in, it's in term- way up. I mean, that's, that's the thing. Right. right? Is, is right. at best, it's a hundred dollars per person per day at the lowest. Right. And you right. figure most people make 15 to $25 an hour. So, you know, that's at least four to, you know, four hours of work that they're mm-hmm. giving for an experience. It's not, okay, I'm giving this money to ride rides. That's not what they're buying. They're buying an right. experience, a magical experience. And that if you are struggling with your price, look at the experience. Cause that's what Disney does is they create an experience yes. and the price justifies it for that. Not the ability to ride the rides, but the experience mm-hmm. itself. So if you're struggling with price, look at your experience and all those little touch points that you were talking about from the moment that you buy to when you are done with the ride, look at every moment in between and maximize those touch points, and then they'll throw the money at you. But you have to look at all of those touch points. Yeah, Disney you is know, all benefit. Go ahead, Kettle. No, my family, like, I went with my aunts, my cousin, my mom. Like, we went to uh, Disney World in Florida uh, when I was 15 years old. To this freaking day, we have inside jokes that came out of that trip. We have memories and we have like, you know, anecdotes of hilarious things that happened because, yeah, like even back then, hilarious things like follow me for some reason. (laughs) Read on me that. Anyway, so uh, but so that's how you justify. Absolutely. Like it's it's almost like, you know, the trip of a lifetime. It's like what some people save for for years before taking their families. But knowing that it's worth it, like, you know, you know, it's going to be worth it. And so in the, like the same experience, how can we reflect that in our own businesses? Like if you want to be like a super high ticket seller, awesome. How is your, your experience to your clients going to be so amazing that it is justified that they are like, I saved for six months to be able to afford your program, but it's worth it because I know it's going to be worth it. And so like, how are you going to bring that to your game? Absolutely. That's such a, such a great point. You and both Amber basically said, if you can back it up, you know, it makes sense, right? Create that Mm -hmm. experience. Disney's not selling features. They're not Mm -hmm. selling. We have a state of the art ride that will show your projection that will allow you to experience not only air that's compressed and water that drips from a system. Uh, We have pads on the inside of the ride that will push against they're selling the benefit. You're going to feel like you're in James Cameron's Pandora. You're going to fly a banshee at dizzying heights. You know, if you're afraid of heights, maybe you shouldn't ride this ride. It might be too much. Uh, you like, we have to get away from selling features. And, uh, you know, uh, you're going to get two Zoom calls every 60 days from me. Uh, and you're going to have three check-ins and start selling benefits. I'm going to be mm-hmm. face-to-face with you every step of the way. Uh, I'm going to be in close contact with you. You'll never feel lost or like you're stranded on Internet Island because we're going to take this journey together. This is the partnership that's been keeping you from success the entire time. And now that we're partnered up, not only is it going to be much simpler, it's going to be much more enjoyable. And the memories of what we do and the pride that you're going to feel are going to last forever. 
that's what we sell. That's what Disney's good at. Um, you know, and I was able to experience that uh, this uh, this this past weekend. Also, it was hot. Uh, I wanted to throw that in there too. Uh, it was like, <laughs> it's like a thousand degrees with like nine hundred percent humidity. Uh, I wanted to dive into that lily pad ocean that they fabricated. Um, oh, and I did see Goofy, uh, and I mooed at him. He didn't say anything back. <laughs> like. Bro, you got so you got so high and mighty. You're so corporate now. You don't remember your your first language, Goofy. Whatever, bro. Uh, that's how that's how I dealt with them. Um, but I feel like I feel like I feel like we turned in a solid show today. Like it was it yes. it wasn't terrible. Um, it it was no. acceptable. And if and if you love Disney, you you love the show today. Uh, I'm I'm gonna take us out with with a song if that's okay. Is that okay for okay? Um, I think it goes M I C. See you real soon. K E Y. Why? Because we love you. M O U S E. We shouldn't have a podcast. Jingle, jingle. <laughs> this is the online trainer show. Trainer show. Trainer show. This is the online trainer show. We shouldn't have a podcast. <laughs>